What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined this morning by Daniel Stark, and here to talk a little Shohei Otani and the Dodgers on a Thursday morning. Daniel, a couple reports coming out in recent days. The first from Jim Bowden of The Athletic, saying that Otani's done with the Angels, not expected to return. Uh, you and I would both say take the Jim Bowden report with the largest grain of salt, but it is yeah. Dylan Hernandez from the LA Times also reporting that the Dodgers remain very interested in Otani and basically lays out the case for why the Dodgers are the most likely logical destination, both from the Dodgers perspective, but more importantly, from Otani's perspective. So as you look through the reporting about Otani, who has a torn UCL, not expected to pitch next year, but theoretically could hit. What do you make of, of all this? Is this just nonsense or is there a little bit of fire here where there's smoke? I mean, I, I definitely think the Dodgers are still going to be in on Otani. Like, I don't think I don't think this injury is going to scare teams away as much as we originally thought necessarily. Like, I think when the, the news first comes out that he's having that he has the torn UCL, he might have Tommy John. It's like, whoa, like this is going to cost him so much money. No one's going to want him anymore. And now that a few weeks have passed, I think um, we've all realized that, hey, even if he doesn't pitch for a year or even two, um, it's still not the end of the world. He's still going to be able to hit. He's still incredible. He's still great from a marketing perspective. Like he's still a winning baseball player. So I definitely think teams are still going to be in on him. I definitely think the Dodgers are going to be in on him. This has been almost a decade long pursuit at this point for the Dodgers, like going back to when Shohei was in high school. Um, and if they're able to get him for a little cheaper because of this injury, then who knows? It could end up being a blessing in disguise just because, um, he, we all know he's probably going to sign a long-term deal here, probably 10 years. So yeah. um, if you lose the first year of that, it, it's definitely not the end of the world. And, and um, could, you know, there's that you're definitely still going to see the long-term benefits of having Shohei Otani. So I definitely think it makes sense um, that the Dodgers are still going to be in on him. Um, I don't get to say this very often, but I, th I do think Dylan Hernandez laid out a, a very good case of why the Dodgers make uh, the most sense. So I, I do think that was one of his better articles. Um, but but I, I think going back to the Jim Bowden thing, I don't know if anyone really knows what Shohei wants. And that's the big wild card in all of this. Um, you know, I, I think we'd all like to believe that he's leaving the Angels just because he's been there so long and has literally never played in the postseason. But at the same time, um, it's an organization that he's comfortable with. So I don't think anyone really knows what he wants and no one will know until we get the, that news yeah. in December or January, whenever it is that he's signing with whatever team. Yeah. Let, let's unpack a couple of those things. The first I'm curious, do you think Otani's like, do you think Otani's price has gone down? I mean, if you think about the argument has generally been, this is a guy that they're going to be paying $25 million a year to be a hitter and $25 million a year to be a pitcher. And that's how you arrive at 10 years and $500 million. Yeah. Like you think th that he has to take a small discount on the front end or because of a, the medical sort of procedures that exist now and how, how successful Tommy John surgeries have been plus just the overwhelming value of the player and the person. Do you think the number is going to be right about where it was three or six months ago? Uh, I think it might decrease a little bit just for the fact that he's probably not going to be pitching next year. It's his second Tommy John yeah. surgery. Like it's not, it's definitely not nothing if he undergoes that surgery. Um, just looking at it from a pitching perspective, I think he's still going to get all his money for the hitting. Um, yeah. I, what I think we're going to see is I think we're going to see a lot of incentives as far as the pitching side goes. So I still think the ability to get to the total top dollar 500 million 550 million whatever it's going to be yeah. I, I think that'll still be there but a lot of the pitching stuff will be incentive laden and I think that would make sense for both sides just because if if Otani is pitching um and and he's pitching well which I think if he's healthy we all expect to be the case um yeah. I, I don't think any team would have a problem paying him that extra money that he deserves and if you're looking at it from Otani's perspective uh there's no one better to bet on than yourself um, I'm sure he believes he could get back to full strength pitching. Um, and if so, um, you could have incentives as far as innings and starts go where where yeah. you could still make all that money. Yeah, and he's already bet on himself once by coming over when he did, avoiding um, you know, being able to go to true free agency. So it's not, you know, he, he just seems to be a guy who look, everyone wants to get paid. I think his um mindset is different. You know, it's not to say he's gonna take a discount, but I think th there's just a different something different in the most positive way possible about this guy. 
Um, the second thing you mentioned related to the Hernandez article was that the Dodgers, the case he makes for the Dodgers being best positioned for Otani makes sense. So Hernandez's basic case was, look, part of the reason Otani got to a place where he is hurt is because the Angels were in a grind of a postseason race, which they have obviously come up short of. So he was he made the decision like I think it, everyone has made this clear. Otani is the one who kept saying, I want to play. I want to pitch. I think he's played in all but two games this season prior to the injury and pitched, obviously, to a point where he shouldn't have been. And now he's hurt. The beauty of the Dodgers, Hernandez point is, is that the Dodgers win the division by like 10 to 15 games. It feels like almost every year. So when you get to Octo August and September, Otani doesn't need to pitch every six days. He doesn't need to pitch if he doesn't feel 100%. He could even get days off from being the DH and rest so that he could then go and accomplish what he's trying to accomplish in the postseason. What is it about? Like, do you think that seems to make sense? But like, do you think that's what's going to be most compelling to Otani? Like, do you think in actual practical reality that that's how this would play out if he came to the Dodgers? Look, I know if I was Otani, it would make all the sense in the world. I think Dylan made a great point where on the Angels, you're fighting for a wild card spot. Yeah. They're not even in that position anymore. But all season, that's kind of what they were fighting for. And and yeah. like you said, Otani played basically every game and he carried that team for months. And Mike Trout's been out. Anthony Rendon's been out. He's had no help whatsoever. And that's yeah. probably why he got to the point he did where where he's just worn out and injured. And and on the Dodgers, that's that's just not going to happen like if you look at um you know just from a pitching perspective um we know the Dodgers are going to need starting pitching but at the same time they're more looking for that top end starting pitching like the depth is there if you look organizationally yeah. like the Dodgers have so many young pitchers that are coming up and especially when you look at it from Otani's perspective he's not going to pitch next year so you're looking at you know 2025 and beyond yeah. by then all these all these you know, prospects the Dodgers have will be big league ready. They're going to have a ton of depth. He, he won't have to pitch every five days and DH the other four. Like, he'll be able to get days off. He could pitch once a week if he wants. Um, I think, you know, looking at where he's been injury-wise, um, you know, he's had a, a few different things over the years. Um, and, and as he gets older, he's going to want to stay fresh. Um, obviously, he's going to be signing a long-term deal. So, you're going to, you know, as an organization, you're going to want – you know, to to keep him fresh and, and do what's best for him long term. So I think if you look yeah. at it from that perspective, uh, the Dodgers are the best option. Um, but I don't I don't know if he's going to be looking at it from that perspective. Like you said, Otani is a very unique individual. No one really knows what he wants. Like, I feel like there's some people have have thrown stuff out there, but I, yeah. who knows if any of it's true or not? I don't know if anyone has a, a direct line to Otani. So um, yeah. we'll see. But I, I, I think if just looking at it from a logical perspective, the Dodgers make all the sense in the world. Yeah, we know what was important to him the last time around, which was, you know, all the reports say he wanted to be on the West Coast. Um, and that, that, you know, there was a bunch of different factors as to why he ended up choosing the Angels. You hope that's the case. I mean, the good thing for the Dodgers is if Otani's number one priority truly is winning baseball games and winning a championship, Look at the other teams that are options. Hernandez laid out, hey, the Braves are probably the only team in all of baseball that can rival the Dodgers as far as continuous success. There's a no chance that the Braves are signing a $500 plus million dollar contract to Otani. Like, just go back and see what they did with Freddie Freeman, and that will tell you everything <laughs> you need to know about how they feel about spending that money. You've yeah. got the Mets who want to spend all the money in the world. Well, guess what? They just tore down their roster in the middle of the season and traded it for a bunch of guys who are like three years away. They have no real pathway to being successful next year or potentially even the year after that. Um, the one team that I think is the real sleeping giant here is the Mariners because the Mariners are on the West Coast. We know the Ichiro factor and sort of just the relationship that Japanese fans have with that city. It's Ichiro loved it. They were successful, but also they've got Julio. They've got young talent there. I think it would be more of a risk because you're again going to a team that like the angels hasn't won anything or been sustainably successful. Obviously a team like the Rangers has been throwing crazy money around. Could Otani end up there with, with Corey Seager, everybody's favorite, you know, former Dodger. Um, it, it'll just be really interesting. I mean, I think it's fair to say, even though we're a Dodgers podcast and this is going to seem like a total Homer comment, the Dodgers make the most sense in the world because by all accounts, they're not going to be afraid to spend the money. 
as a city, as a team in Los Angeles with a huge market and a huge international community, they can connect with and probably maximize the marketing value of having Otani in town. They have the history of international players. Um, got, you know, you pick pick any nationality, and the the best guy who's ever played from there outside of like Ichiro has probably been connected to the Dodgers at some point. They've got Fernando, they've got Hideo Nomo, they've got Chanho Park. Um, they just have a tradition of that sort of thing. And so I think all these pieces line up on top of they're going to be successful. Like this team is set up to win sustainably forever. Mookie Betts is here for another like eight years. Freddie Freeman is here for another four or five years at least. And then you've got the pitching. You mentioned it. The Bobby Miller, Emmett Sheehan, Ryan Pepio, you know, Kyle Hurt, all these guys, Michael Grove that are under contract, even Dustin May and Tony Gonsolin under contract for a number of more years. And so, you add it all together, and I- I'm not saying it's for sure a slam dunk that's going to happen, but I don't think it's crazy to think that the Dodgers are the clear favorites for Otani. Yeah, and one thing that neither of us have even mentioned yet is the fact that he already plays in Southern California, so it's not like it would be some huge move for him. He right. could even stay in whatever house he's living in now. He could stay there. I know he's very comfortable in, in Orange County, um, you know, he's enjoyed his time with the Angels outside of the, the non-winning part. Like, he's enjoyed his his overall experience. So so that's, I mean, he wouldn't even have to do any moving. It would just be a little bit longer of a commute. But, uh, you know, th- there's ways to, to work around that as well. Well, and especially <laughs> since the Angels are in Los Angeles, right? Like, I mean. Oh, yeah. Been- that's what they try to tell us. So. It's the same city. So, <laughs> well, let us know what you think. Again. Bowden says that Otani is done with the Angels. Dylan Hernandez says the Dodgers, despite the torn UCL, remain incredibly interested, according to his sources. So a huge story, obviously, one that will sort itself out once the season ends. Lots to left to do for the Dodgers, who are um, trying to lock up the division and get ready for the postseason. But this is the story that's going to be lingering for the next couple of months. It'll be it'll be the background noise to the postseason um that that comes and you know if the Dodgers are successful or if there's failure involved this is the one that's going to get louder and louder and louder that is Daniel Starkin my name is Jeff Spiegel as always thanks for joining us please subscribe ring the notification bell send this video to a friend let them know we would love to have more Dodgers fans join our community as we head towards the postseason stretch enjoy the rest of your day folks and as always go Dodgers